What up, cappers, gamblers, punters, hustlers, low beggars? Happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Thank you for watching Betting with the Bag right here on Pub Sports Radio. What an incredible day of sports we have ahead of us. I don't know if days get more exciting than this. I hope you all are enjoying time off of work, hanging with the family and watching sports and making money off said sports coming off another winning day we're really kind of putting these winning days together and a big reason for that glory is your first guest maxwell smart uh he's coming off another winning day four and three but up 2.20 units his smash and grab on first half big money lines continues with the James Madison first half at plus 155 casher. He also cashed that UConn St. Louis money line parlay. I almost had a giant night in NHL. Uh, ooh, that Ducks first period of plus 167 was just fucking massive swing. I mean, it pushed. McCarr scored with you know under a minute left in the first period, but ooh, Jesus, that was going to be a big score for me. And it went away pretty fast. Still a winning day in NHL. Still feel really good about everything that's going on here. And I did get a little bit of rest. A real deal prime in the house. Thank you for joining us. Fap, fap, win coming in from Australia. Brian Watson sending out love. There's Rolly Hernandez ready to go. Tony Cobbs, thank you so much for the dono. It means so much to us. We're all very proud to work for Pub Sports Radio. I love working for Jeff Slaughter and all of these great cappers and my best friends. The cappers and my best friends uh, all working together. It's um, just it's so easy to be thankful, man. It's just uh, really easy to be thankful. Steve in the house. Fat Fat win. Australian racing on Saturday. All right. Fat Fat. Fat Fat hands us cash with these spots. Our playboy. And he says, if it rains, double your load. A mother. All right, locked in. Uh, Yusef Richardson, thank you for joining us. There's razor sharp picks running so hot right now. Is a is a great to be able to jump on your show last night. Horse racing show, no horse racing show tonight because of Thanksgiving. But man, that was a really fun. Brian in the house, Puzzler, Omar Castro, Crumb, Twist One, Banana Grapes, Anthony Witherspoon. Crumbs on Michigan State first half and Miami first half, San Diego first half. We are starting with Maxwell Smart because uh, huge. Huge college basketball games popping off in 55 minutes. Uh, Andrew G. Benjamin Martin. Great to see you, Benjamin. There's Birdie in the house. And uh, Puzzler says, great idea to open with Max Day. Yes, uh, it, it, as soon as I figured out what exactly the sporting environment was uh, with Max's help, it was like, yeah, let's just get him on first. Let's get him on first, and let's get the glory started immediately. Uh, Gerald Jones, Cab, THC is Rizza. Mark Schillingberg coming off a heater last night. That's two in a row. Nice, Mark. I knew you would bounce back, baby. I knew that you would. I knew that you would. Uh, Rob Garvey, ready to get to work. Hold my beer, says the Bears. Andy Dalton's back. Look, I, I, I had... I've come so close to betting the Bears at minus three. Once they took the juice away, but I'm not. I'm just going to stick with the under 41 and a half. Could the Lions pull out a miracle on Thanksgiving? I, I No, I don't think they will. But I, will, I don't know if I want to put money against it at this point. God, I can't wait for all these sports to pop off. God, I'm so thankful to work with you guys. Uh, I was so tired yesterday. You know, we had the NFL show. That was three hours and 15 minutes. And then I spent all day preparing for the NFL show. So then I didn't start my prep 31 games till like 11, 15 or 11, 30 morning. But even that really was more to midnight because I had to, you know, take in all the information that we delivered in NFL and then make bets. So then I started at midnight for 31 games. Uh, so I was, uh, I was hurting yesterday and you guys really uh, carried it and my guests carried it and, Oh, man, I love this. I fucking love this. And look at here. First off, let's give a big shout out to Ron Crawford. Had surgery yesterday and um, successful. Successful surgery. Uh, he's in pain. He's home resting. And he's in the chat. And it shows the kind of capper that Ron Crawford is. So uh, Ron Crawford also has already sent in his uh, spreadsheet play of the day. It is in football. We have Millsy. We have MMA Locker Room making his 
betting with the bag debut today. He's going to join Sharpie for the NFL breakdown. Uh, but Ron Crawford has a look on that first game. Uh, I just want to see Ron Crawford's face up here. Uh, successful surgery. He's uh, got to cook the bird, so he's got to get, he's got to get moving, even though he's in pain. And so much love for Ron Crawford. All right, Bon Kui Kui, Gerald Jones, Tony Cobbs. A hold my beer says Nagy will be fired if he loses Detroit. He will be. He it, it kind of feels like it, it's set up for that to happen, doesn't it? I mean, I, I, God, I, I, I look. When you gamble for a long time, you stop believing in fairy tales. You stop believing in Disney movies. You know that the worst case scenario can happen and does happen sometimes. And you become cold. You know, you, you, you become, you, you get an edge about you. That's, uh, that's, that's dangerous. And, and, I, and I love it. I fucking love this edge. I love this edge. You know, but it happens. And, and you stop believing in like feel good sports stories. So I want to fade this possible feel good sports story in Detroit, but some for some reason I, I haven't been able to do it. Even though they took the juice away, they gave me a minus three, a plus a hundred. There's Black Thor King in the house. So first off, happy Thanksgiving, and God damn, I'm just so thankful to get the cap with you guys day in and day out, and. I'm so thankful to work with your first guest here, making a opening appearance for the first time, coming off a four win, three loss, plus 2.2 unit day, sitting 35 wins, 28 losses, 55.6%, plus 7.16 units, ROI plus 11.37%, average line plus 101. When he had that first day of the year where he went two and four, and who cares if the losses were bad losses or good losses, they're still losses. We had a, a guy who'd been with me since the beginning, a guy who I would consider an OG Lobegger, shit on us, uh, shit on Max and I. I went one and three in NHL, lost the game in overtime and lost the game in a shootout. Said there was probably time for us to, to hang up the skates and shit like that. And it made me really angry. And he was in the chat yesterday, and I let him be in the chat. I didn't shout him out i didn't call him out for for trying to be friendly to us of course he's of course max turned it all around because that's what max does max wins what does max do for a living he gambles for a living how does he do that because he wins i've watched him win year after year after year after year this guy shits on him and and and, and the fact that i didn't call him out uh kind of kind of irked me all day yesterday I mean, it's his right to watch the show, but I would prefer if he'd fuck off. And he knows I'm talking about him. I don't know if he's watching this show right now, trying to enjoy his Thanksgiving, but he can fucking blow me. And I'd prefer if he didn't watch this show. Okay, let me get that out of the way. Of course, Max is up 11.37% ROI right now. Some guy Judging him off of one day makes me want to sharpen up a chopstick, say happy Thanksgiving, and stab him over and over again in the larynx. How's your Thanksgiving? You know who I'm talking about, don't you? In the chat yesterday trying to be friendly to us. God. God, what a roller coaster ride capping is. Uh, he, uh, Coppin State, Canisius, first half over 69 and a half was a winner. UConn minus two and a half at minus 108 was a winner. UConn money line, St. Louis money line parlay at plus 168 was a winner. James Madison full game plus four and a half at plus 100 was a loser. But James Madison first half plus 155 money line was a winner. San Diego full game plus five and a half at minus 103 was a loser. And San Diego first half plus 151 was a loser. Four and three plus 2.2 .2 units. I love capping with them. I'm proud to call him my friend. I believe in him every single day, whether it's a winning day or a losing day, because I know he's a winner. Please welcome to the show Maxwell Smart in the house. Maxie, what's happening, my man? Jim, very inspiring intro. It was definitely rivaling, possibly defeating the other gentleman who is coming on behind me, who gives me great intros, the one and only Sharpie the Harpoon Whaler. But... I'll say this, Jim. I'm glad that I don't know and didn't read the chat because 
I would be saying some vulgar things. Like maybe someone was going to get kidnapped and turned out for a month at a Motel 6. So I don't know. You know, I'm a savage. Don't let this fucking uh, haircut in this this uh, orange shirt fool you, okay? <laughs> I so know you are. I'm ready to go. I'm happy. UConn won yesterday, and uh, it's a it's a tough game today. But uh, I'm a diehard, and we're gonna fuck with our eyes open. So I'm ready I to get started. Are. You are a dangerous man and a dangerous capper, and that's why I love hanging out with you, and I love capping with you. It gives an edge to my life that I need as a 42-year-old family man with two young kids. I need a little bit of edge, and Maxwell Smart gives it to me. I'm so, you know, I am a little angry uh, about this guy. Oh, C.D. Lamb is out. Yes! God, I also came so close to betting the Raiders. But I, that helps my under very, very much. Yes. I couldn't believe everything we read. Okay, but I digress. Okay, thank you, CT Base, for that information. Now, it's Thanksgiving, and I know I got out a little bit of anger, but that's what this business is. That's what this game is, you know? Uh, and let me reiterate one more time that I love this. I love capping with Max. I love capping with you guys. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Max wanted to come on first because we have huge games right around the corner. Arthur Mead Jr., Tony Cobbs, uh, thank you guys so much for your donos. It means the world to us. Uh, we, more than anything, we want to work at Pop Sports Radio until we die. So we want this company to succeed. And what we'll tell you is we're not going to sell you anything. We just want to win with you here at Pub Sports Radio. So thank you so much for your donos. All right, let's get to work. Max starts off with a bang. This game pops off in 47 minutes. The battle for Atlantis. His number 22 ranked UConn Huskies 5-0 and versus Michigan State Spartans 4-1 in Imperial Arena, Nassau, Bahamas. I wish I was watching yesterday's game with you, Max. What a roller coaster ride it must have been for you. My college odds are messed up here in, in basketball right now. So I'm just going to move to bet 365 and what I would be able to bet right now and see if it correlates here with what they're offering. They have Connecticut minus 2.5 and, and minus 110 and the total at 138. When I go to this site that's been failing on us, and I'm going to have to figure out a new site to use, we go over to uh, their spreads and totals. We have UConn opening up at minus one at minus 108. It has moved to minus two and a half. Okay, it's refreshing now. Okay, good. It's refreshing now. So this total opened up at 141 and a half. It's all the way down to 137 at Pinnacle, 138 at Bet365. I'm going to go over to the cash flow. I don't know if they're going to show us how much is in there because it just popped on the board and uh, there aren't at this point. We don't know what the cash flow is. UConn comes in off a wild tournament opening, 115-109 double overtime victory over Auburn yesterday. Max, you must have been losing your mind. UConn shot 49.3% from the field, 57.7% from three. Adama Sinogo had a career best 30 points. Tyler Pauly scored a career high 24 points. RJ Cole went for 24. Isaiah Whaley fainted after the game. Michigan State got their tournament started with a very tight 63-61 win over Loyola. By the way, they say that Whaley's good to go. I, but Max will know better. Malik Hall went 9 of 9 from the field, 5 of 5 from 3, 24 points, 32 minutes. Michigan stopped, shot 46%, and Loyola was all over them. 20 turnovers, but Michigan State took care of business. What a great game to start our Thanksgiving. Maxwell Smart, UConn, Michigan State, take it away. Yeah, first off, let's just get a little blurb about that UConn game. The reason why they folded like a folding chair and caught that lead up and had to win in double overtime was because of that full court press. RJ Cole had troubles handling it. We had turnover issues. I think that we do clean that up against Michigan State today. I think that our length, our physicality, our depth is going to come in handy against this team because let's be brutally honest, the only person, the only two people on the team that played more than 40 minutes yesterday was RJ Cole was Isaiah Whaley everybody else played reasonable amount of minutes so I don't think tire legs is going to be a situation from the double overtime game I think that this UConn team is ready to go I think UConn is going to be able to dominate the free throw line they're a much better three-point shooting team than they are than Michigan State is I think that when you look at Bingham and Malik Hall these are guys that you're going to have to get on get physical with well when 
you could bring a cook a cook off the bench to go with Sonogo, to go with Whaley. You know, we got size and dominance all over that front court. And let's be brutally honest. If we put a small guard on Tyrese Martin, what is Tyrese Martin going to do? He's going to back him up in the freaking low block, and he's going to go off glass. So there's weapons on all different areas of this lineup. And my X Factor, Jordan Hawkins, came off the bench and gave you 16 points in less than 20 minutes yesterday. So I'm looking for another performance from him. This is a kid that is going to become a, a star for this program. I think UConn wins because they turn the ball over less. They have better ball facilitation. They're going to win on the offensive glass. They make free throws and the three-point shots there. So unless there is a absolutely atrocious shooting performance early on from UConn, I just don't see how Michigan State's going to get out to it. I will say this, Jim. I respect the people that are on Michigan State. They're playing a situational angle. I understand it. But I'm a UConn fan. I'm not going to come on this show and take Sparty. And uh, we're rolling with UConn, so we'll take the two and a half. We'll fuck with our eyes open, and uh, let's just hope that UConn gets close to the bucket, throws it to Sonogo, we get another career performance, and we don't have eight turnovers from him. And you have no fear that this group might be exhausted. No. Because they're kids. These are these are young kids, Jim. These are young yeah. kids. Get some hydration. Get some rest. Get a body rub. Get some sleep. Get back to it. It's it's your job now. You're making money with the nil, so it's a job. It's not it's not playtime anymore. <laughs> UConn minus two and a half at minus one hundred five. Uh, that is available. The least amount of juice we have is available at Bodog. Very very exciting way to start this game off. You agree with this market move towards the under? I I can see where it's going. I just don't think this UConn team is a team that's going to play the kind of under basketball that we saw last year. If I'm wrong and they're fatigued, then yes, the under makes sense. I don't think they're going to be wrong. These are 18 to 23-year-old young men that are in better shape than you, I, or probably most of the people in the chat. So it's like I think they can do the game that is going to get them that big paycheck eventually. So. There you have it. Battle for Atlantis. Max is on UConn minus two and a half. Uh, by the way, it's now eight straight winners I've had tailing Max. The only move I moved was yesterday was James Madison, first half plus two and a half. So I'm 16 and 12. I got off to a rough start too. I'm 16 and 12, 57.1% plus 3.15 units. My ROI, 11.25%. Max's ROI, 11.37%. God, that feels good to say that. Uh, and Ikshnizzle, thank you so much uh, for the dono, man. I know you guys work so hard for your cash, and it means the world. So thank you very, very much, Ikshnizzle. Also, uh, Ikshnizzle just got off, uh, just uh, got over COVID, and now we hear that Poker Addicted, a.k.a. Piker, a.k.a. Seamus Ignoramus, now has COVID. So he's got 10 days uh, to stay home and cap. Uh, uh but. Be healthy and that, drink lots of liquids and vitamins. You got Max, jump in, buddy. Yeah, that is absolutely terrible. Uh, sh shout to Schmiss. Uh, best wishes. Get better. Um, and yeah, that's that's all I can say. Get those fucking winners too, because I know that you put those out, Jim. I'll just say this right now. I do sure. see a two minus one ten at um, Bet three six five right now on UConn. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. well let's lock that in right now. Wow, yes, it just moved to two as we speak. Wow, great call. Minus two, minus one ten. So I had that up as well. Uh, great, great find. Okay, let's lock that in for you. Minus two at minus one ten. And uh, Seamus, uh, please keep us updated, man. We love you so much, and we'll be thinking about you. So get healthy. Uh, I know you have a young family, so it's going to be tricky to make all this happen. So we'll be thinking about you. Uh, there's Elio in the house. Great to see you. Okay, let's keep rolling. And Max is on the board. UConn minus two at minus 110. Another winning day he's coming off. Of. All right, we move on to 12 p.m. Eastern. This game also pops off in 39 minutes. ESPN Events Invitational. Dayton Flyers, one and three versus Miami Hurricanes, three and one. HP Fieldhouse in Orlando, Florida. Miami opening up at minus five and a half. Now there's sixes across the board. This total opened up at 136 and a half. And now we see 135 and a half on the board. And we do have a ticket count here, which is great. So we have... 4,362 tickets in for this game. 67% of the tickets, 63% of the cash on Miami. 57% of the tickets, 56% of the cash on the under. 
This is a wild one. Dayton opened up their season with a 64-54 win at home over UIC before losing three straight all at home as huge favorites. Started with an ugly 59-58 loss to UMass Lowell as 18.5-point favorites. Followed that up with a 78-59 loss to Lipscomb as 9.5-point favorites. Then on Saturday, they lose 87-81 to Austin P as 13.5-point favorites. Wild. After losing to UCF 95-89 at home as 3.5-point favorites, Miami squeaked by Florida Atlantic 68-66 on the road as 7-point favorites. Then on Sunday, they beat up on Florida A&M 86-59 as 16.5-point favorites. What's going on with Dayton, Max? Do you think that uh, – is there possibly value after what everybody's seen with Dayton or after watching them do that three times in a row, there's something wrong with them and you want to stay away from them? Take it away, Dayton, Miami. Yeah, I've always said that there's something wrong with Dayton, and that's and that's Coach Grant. You know, he's not an offensive coach; he's a great defensive coach. And simply put, his guys just do not bring that same kind of offensive flair this year that we're used to seeing. This is a team with no Obi Top, and there's a team with no Jalen Crutcher anymore. So they're relying on Elijah Weaver, a USC transfer from back when to lead this team from the point guard spot and a Georgia transfer to Monty Kamara to lead it from the front court. Kamara like him. No, nothing bad to say about him. Weaver leaves me a lot to desire. They're having to really mix up the lineups, trying to find a combination that works best. But with this team getting into foul trouble every game and key players getting into foul trouble, it's just not a spot where I'm looking to be backing Dayton. I'm looking at the first half under in this spot, Jim. I like unders when it comes to Miami, and I like unders when it comes to Dayton. These are two teams that I, I think only one game over between the two. And I also like the fact that at the line, uh, we are seeing a couple unders with this number range. And I like number ranges when it comes to totals. Gives you a better indication of what, what numbers are going over, what numbers are staying under. I think that with Miami, this is a spot where I want to back them first half, but I didn't want to take three and a half points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a parlay. I'm going to do another parlay, Jim. And uh, it's a, it's a decent one. It's a plus 153 parlay. I'm going to take UConn money line. I'm going to put it with Miami first half money line. And we're going to lock in a plus 153 uh, parlay that hopefully will be a nice casher to add on to our one from yesterday. UConn money line Miami first half money line is a plus one fifty three casher and you also want the Pinnacles moved it to sixty three the other books still have sixty three and a half you want that first half under sixty three and a half at minus one ten yes please I think that with the three point shooting being pretty much non existent for both of these teams and relying on volume free throws which I think have been coming at the end of games not in the first halves I feel very comfortable laying this sixty three and a half even though it's right on the threshold of my number. I love it. There are the two 12 p.m. games from our Maxwell Smart, and they're big ones. So at the battle for Atlantis, he's on UConn minus two at minus 110. He's tied the UConn money line with Miami Hurricanes first half money line at plus 153. Again, it was just, uh, what, 15, 16 hours ago that he cashed the UConn money line, St. Louis money line. Now, I know the UConn money line was, uh, you know, a sweat, but that St. Louis money line was just a you know a, a, a very casual walk in the park. He's also on the first half under 63 and a half at minus 110. Uh, Piker says, I think I universally hate all minus six basketball lines pre flop, those are almost always super tight and best if played in game. Hoops 590, UConn money line, loyal to Chicago plus two and a half, Lions plus three, and the Bills over. Let's keep rolling. Maxwell Smart joining us. And Max, your show is on today. I know Thanksgiving's changed a lot of things. Is your show on or not? Yes, it will be. We will, we will most likely be on at 5 p.m. at our normal time talking about the very full and uh, talented uh, late slate for this college basketball card. So make sure you tune in. And uh, I didn't uh, lose all my picks yesterday. So it's worth definitely coming in and maybe not fading me today. Your ROI on our show is over 11%. And I made it clear last night on the horse racing show that I will be at my very best if I only make moves on the game's max caps. So that's my rule at this point in the year. Going with the Peter Loshak idea of not biting off too much 
and, and that's been a problem of mine in years past. So if Max is capping it, I might bet it. Black and white, that's it. Let's move on to Max's next spot. Another afternoon action for us all on Thanksgiving, 2 p.m. Eastern. The UNO Classic Presbyterian Blue Hose, 3 and 2, 0 oh and 2 on the road at New Orleans. Privateers, 2 and 3, 2 and 1 at home. We're at Lakefront Arena in New Orleans, Louisiana. This game, no line here. Why would that be? Let's see if I can get one here. I'm shocked that they're not giving me one. Let me just move over to the. Okay, so we got one here at Bet365, but not on the odds page SBR for whatever reason. New Orleans, two-point favorites. This total at 138.5 right now at Bet365. Presbyterian bounced back from their 79-45 road beatdown at the hands of the Bearcats by defeating VMI at home, 59-54, three-and-a-half-point dogs. Sean Harris went for 22 points, but he did shoot seven for 19 uh, they had a tough game from the field. New Orleans followed losses at Northwestern, 83-67, and at home to Rice, 83-78, by beating up on Central Arkansas, 90-63 last night as eight-and-a-half-point favorites to start off the UNO Classic. Derek St. Hilaire went for 22 points. The Privateers shot 54% from the field and 38.9% from three. I'm wondering if this is a possible letdown spot after that really nice performance yesterday. Max, Presbyterian, New Orleans, take it away. Yeah, Jim, this is a Presbyterian team that I absolutely loathe. I would not accept free apparel if someone sent it to me. And I don't like Rayshon Harrison. This team has cost me money twice against VMI. And I don't know, maybe I'm just a glutton for punishment, but I don't give a fuck. I'm going right back to New Orleans. I'm fading Presbyterian. Now, this time, they're playing a team, once again, that can go fast tempo, does rely on scoring the basketball more than they do their defense. But the difference is... um, once we've seen Presbyterian not play VMI, they've reverted back to their normal losing selves. They're not at home. They're in New Orleans building. I think that New Orleans is a special team in the Southland. I think that with Daniel Saki coming off the bench, the Winnipeg Manitoba resident is a definite change of pace ball handling point guard and we're seeing the scoring come out i think that him alongside troy green and Derek saint hilaire is a great trio of scores and what does new orleans do well they don't shoot 20 percent from three point like presbyterian does they shoot 31 percent, which is not that much better but they shoot 10 less attempts a game why because this team goes inside they are going for high percentage looks that's how you're able to put up 55 points in the second half like you did against central arkansas yesterday it was a tough first half hard to watch but i think that this is a group that negates presbyterian's advantage on the offensive glass gets some very good ball facilitation, does just enough on the half-court defense to turn Presbyterian over a couple times, and does not give us an ass clencher and makes this line at one and a half or two look a little short, like me standing beside, I don't know, let's say Yao Ming. So I'll take Central, I'll take New Orleans in this spot. I'll take them one and a half, Jim, and I'll even make it a two-unit play for the show. We can't. Oh, you want to do first half full game? No. Oh, we can't do a two unit play? No, no. We're keeping everything across the board. All right. So then we'll do one and a half and then we'll take the two also. Okay. Uh, Well, we will. Okay. Uh, But first off, there is 1,815 tickets in, 85% on the spread on New Orleans. And 95% of the cash. Uh, where are you getting uh, one and a half, by the way? So I can just pop it in here. Um, either at Circa um, or... And is it regular juice? Uh, yeah, it's minus 110. Okay, perfect. Orleans. There's a minus couple other one. places, but I would never be able to buy half. And also once the two, which I, I've got to figure... Just because, um, you know, I, I, ca- I track so many different cappers. And we just have like you know, a set of rules and, and I've kept it a certain way, but we can, you know, everything can be changed up. So I'll, I'll figure out that side of things here. Uh, all yeah, right. I just, didn't, I just, sorry, Jim, I just didn't oh. want to double up first half because of what we saw yesterday. I think that it definitely is an interesting first half play, but I just wanted to go big on the full game. I hear you. Uh, yeah, I hear you. I, I hear you. And, and you know what? The, 
regardless of the, the what I'm going to do with the record keeping, it's important for our fans and friends and audience to know that that that's how much you like this game, that you want it full game as a double up piece. So that's it's all important and helpful. So it's all all good. All right, let's keep rolling. So Max moving on New Orleans full game. We have one last game on Max's card before we get into NFL. By the way, uh, Milzy is having an issue. His uh, laptop's not turning on, so he's having a problem with his laptop. So uh, that's going on right now. But let's move on to the last game for our Maxwell Smart. Number 10 ranked Alabama Crimson Tied. Four and overs. Iona Gales, five and OHB Fieldhouse in Orlando, Florida. So this game is the one that follows the Dayton Miami game. After just squeaking by South Al- Southern Alabama, 73 68 at home is 20 and a half point favorites. It was a pretty shocking situation. Alabama beat up on Oakland at home, 86 59 last Friday, 16 and a half point favorites. Iona comes in off their fifth straight win, 81 65 here at HP Fieldhouse. And that was, I believe, on the 20th. So I believe that was on Saturday. So, Max. I don't know if you know, I guess they're just down in Orlando practicing every day or did, I don't know if they went home after that, but that's a pretty dangerous thing. If you have the Siona Gales team, just hanging out in Orlando, resting and practicing all day. Uh, they beat North Alabama as 13 and a half point favorites. They beat them by 16 points. This game pops off at 5 PM. We have Alabama as no. Oh, that's the first half. Sorry. Let me move on to the full game here. Sorry, one second. So they're six and a half point favorites first half. Let's see what they are. Full game is going to be popping up here right now. At full game, they're minus 12. And this total either at 153 or 152 and a half. Max, take it away. Your 5 p.m. spot, Alabama Crimson Tide versus Iona Gales. Yeah, this is a game where I'm going to I'm going to say I expect offense. I do not expect a South Alabama Alabama performance. It is going to be interesting to see this team go out on the road. Jawan Gary is questionable to come back with an ankle injury. That will help their defense definitely up front, but it's going to be about the guard play, you know. When we see Jaden Shackelford and Javon Quinterly both go off in the same game, that is very healthy. I think that we got a really nice sign last time out for Alabama with Charles Bediaco going five for eight from the field and giving you double digit points so that's exciting also for fellow canadian and i just think that with this alabama iona game you know iona's gonna be missing elijah joiner elijah joiner did something to his ankle or to his leg i can't remember what the exact injury was but he did not play in that north alabama game they need him today because they are used to having that really nice experience um ball handling scoring combo in the backcourt last year they had a Guests. This year they have freaking Joiner and they need him to go along Tyson Jolly. I think that the key for Iona is how Nelly Jr. Joseph performs against Alabama's front court. If they are able to establish him and get him to score early in the low post, I do think that Iona will find a way to stay in this game. But for me, you know, I am all about overs with this matchup, and I love the first half over. I wish that we got the opener, but I'm still willing to take the 73 in the first half. First half over 73. I'm going to pull up a couple spots to see if I can uh, beat that. And uh, your affinity for Patino is still in play here? Listen, the man understands the, the, the needed experience of time with strippers. Local, out of town, overseas, they're all great. We got to support them. Coach Patino knows that. He lost his job over it. That's my br- that's my Eskimo brother right there. That's what I'm saying. Love Coach Patino. Oh, I'm seeing I'm seeing so so I know we talked about 73, but I'm seeing 72 and a half on the board here. If you see a 72 and a half, lock it in because it's definitely a worse number than I got, but I still like this game and first half to go 75 plus. All right, let's lock that in over 72 and a half. First half over 72 and a half. Uh, that's confirmed. That's available at Bet365 right now as we speak. Over 72 and a half. First half bet here for Maxwell Smart. We are about to get into NFL. But before we do, let's review Maxwell Smart's action. He's coming off a four and three day 
plus 2.2 units, cash to plus 168, parlay, cash to plus 155, first half money line on James Madison. He's 35 and 28 on the show, hitting at 55.6%, plus 7.16 units, ROI plus 11.37%, average line plus 1. Oh, one. Max gets his card started with his beloved Yukon Huskies minus two at minus 110. He's then parlaying Yukon money line with the Miami Hurricane first half money line at plus 153. He's also on the first half under 63 and a half at minus 110 in Dayton, Miami. Then New Orleans, he wants badly. He wants badly trying to figure out how to make it a two unit play at this point. That's how much he wants it, but just full game. The best line we can give him at this point is New Orleans minus one and a half at minus 110. That's Lakefront Arena, UNO Classic over Presbyterian. Then at 5 p.m., he's on the first half over 72 and a half Alabama Crimson Tide, Iona Gales. Again, we only give him what uh, bets are available as he's live here on the show, which does hurt him quite badly in the long run. And I love that he handles it very uh, comfortably and doesn't, it doesn't bother. I mean, although it hurts him, he understands the situation and he handles it beautifully. First half over 72 and a half, even though you got that at 70, Max? Yeah, 70 and a half is what I got. So still, uh, uh, you know, still making it an official pick here on the show, even though it's a tough, tough spot for him. Uh, Jeffrey Campbell wishing happy Thanksgiving. Good spirits to everyone. Uh, Merrick Miller in the house is happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Best YouTube capper show. Uh, thank you, Merrick. And it's because of cappers in on the screen like maxwell smart and sharpie who's about to come on and everybody in the chat that makes this show uh, so much fun and inspires us daily max thank you for coming on first to get your action in so that we'll all have 12 p.m bets uh, we we love you man uh, enjoy this giant giant day of basketball and then catch maxwell smart alongside connor mac 5 p.m eastern today on ncaa net profits on pub sports radio Max, any last words for these great cappers supporting the show? Yeah, just want to say happy Thanksgiving to all the people in the chat, to all your families. Enjoy your food. Enjoy your sports. Happy Thanksgiving to all the people serving overseas. We uh, are definitely thankful for your protection of our democracy. And, of course, let's definitely dip our chicken tenders in honey, push the honey mustard off the table, make a mess if you have to, let the dog lick it up. Let's have a great day. And you lucky sons of bitches get Sharpie, the Harpoon Whaler, the BBW Master, the guy that I've almost called my father. Let's go, Sharpie. Almost called his father. Uh, okay, there he is. Uh, I don't know how I can beat that intro other than saying I'm very thankful to Cap with your next guest. Coming to us from San Diego, uh, California. And, man, his player props are on point. Please welcome to the show Sharpie in the house. Sharpie, what's happening, man? Man, I'm baked like a cake, and it's supposed to be pie time. So uh, let's get to the fucking money, my guy. Let's do it. Let's do it, Sharpie. You're coming off a winning performance on NFL Pub Hub on our Sunday show, and we have – Thanksgiving action for us right now. I'm coming off my fourth straight winning week, and I was in a bad way there for a second. So right now I'm 71 and 64, hitting at 52.6%, down 0.25 units ROI, minus 0.19% average line, minus 111, coming off a 7 and 5 plus 1.5 unit week, which was actually a 7 and 3 Sunday, but I lost the Thursday nighter and lost the Monday nighter. And now we have Thanksgiving action. So on our show, I talked about wanting these Chicago Bears on our show on Tuesday night. At that point, it was minus three at minus 115. Then they took all the juice away and offered me minus three at plus 100, and I still couldn't pull the trigger. And at that point, the early sharp action had come in on the Detroit Lions, and that has changed. 49% of the tickets on the Bears and 56% of the cash. So some bigger bets coming in on the Bears. 55, or sorry, excuse me, 56% of tickets on the under, 70% of cash on the under. I am on the under 41 and a half. I didn't get the best number. There are 42s out there. But Bono did move on the Lions because he could get them at Pinnacle at the time at plus three and a half at minus 121. I have tons of stats and breakdowns, a lot of which I did on the Tuesday show. 
But the most important stuff right now is just that Fields is being ruled out. So the Red Rock and Andy Dalton will start a quarterback. Robinson hasn't practiced all week. And it was mentioned in the chat that he is, because he was doubtful, that he's out. Uh, Darnell Mooney was limited all week. I don't know if we have an injury designation or if we know if he's going to be in. Goff has been limited in practice all week, but he will be behind center. And then Fl Trey Flowers will miss his third straight game. So Halapulavati Vitae concussion is out. Cornerback AJ Parker out. Tackle Matt Nelson out for these Lions. Then you have Michael Brockers, who is questionable with the knee injury. Over to the Bears, we know Akeem Hicks ankle out. Damian Williams calf out. You have defensive end Mario Edwards Jr. with a rib injury, defensive back Deshaun Gibson with a chest injury, and Marquise Goodwin with a shoulder injury, all questionable. We'll talk about more statistical analysis after we hear how Sharpie is going to get paid here on Thanksgiving Thursday in a game that pops off in just 48 short minutes. Sharpie, it's your table, baby. Let's go. Man, let's get into some of these stats, guys. Both of these teams are 11th and 13th versus the pass. So stat-wise, prop-wise, I don't want nothing to do. I'm not looking towards pass. Both of these teams suck fucking balls versus the run. We got the Bears are 21st versus the rush. The Lions are 31st. Both are allowing more than 120 yards on the ground. Hence probably why Jimmy's on the fucking under. He's expecting a lot of rushing today, which – is what I'm expecting, guys. I can't give you out this play because I gave it out yesterday and it's moved up. I did bet Montgomery over 17 and a half attempts. He's now at 18 and a half. People are seeing what I'm seeing. Um, versus the Lions in week four, he had 23 carries for 106 yards and two touchdowns. He's only had 27 carries the last two weeks. If you break that down, that's only like 13 and a half. And, and they're giving us a 17 and a half, which moved to 18. People would look at that and be like, there's no fucking value there, guys. Like, well, why are you betting that? Well, he's had 95% of the running back carries in those two games. And in one of those games, the game just got out of hand and they didn't run the ball. So I expect with Andy Dalton behind center, not fields, a old school Bears freaking game going to happen, guys. I see 30 touches to this guy. Yes, he should smash his, his rushing prop, but I think he smashes his attempts, doubles his attempts damn near. I think he gets one of those 30 type. 30 type carry game. So uh, I don't hate it at 18 and a half. My best bet for this show is going to be swift over 32 and a half receiving yards, guys. I needed Goff in. We got Goff in. He's hit this seven out of 10 games, guys. But if you, if you look into it, two of those games, one was a rainy ass game. He didn't hit it in the other game. Goff wasn't there. So technically he's hit this shit seven out of eight times in my eyes. So he's at 32 and a half receiving yards on FanDuel at minus 110. It may have gone up within the next hour. I don't hate it at 33 or 34, guys. He's going to get it today here and why. Jamal Williams at the beginning of the year was considered a split back. Well, they've split the carries with him and they stopped throwing him the ball. Jamal Williams doesn't have more than two catches in the last six games where – DeAndre Swift's been targeted four times or more in every freaking game. So we're going to take DeAndre Swift's receiving yards over 32 and a half. And that's my best bet on this game. Over 32 and a half. Now, I just retweeted your Thanksgiving action. And I apologize for, for missing that tweet. In that tweet, you have Montgomery over 17 and a half attempts. And you yes, also but it's moved to 18. So I, I, I didn't yeah. want to give it out here. No, I get it. I, absolutely. These are crucial, crucial numbers here. So I, I'm totally with that. And then you had the swift rush and receiving over 105 and a half yards with the golf must start connected to it. Now we have the best bet here for our show is swift over 32 and a half receiving yards from our Sharpie. Our next guest has fixed the computer issues and he's ready to jump on the show right now. Please welcome, making his betting with the bag debut. We got MMA locker room, Millsy in the house. Millsy, what's happening, my man? Hey, what's good? What's good? What's good, man? Finally made it through. Jimmy the bag. Every morning, you got to wake up and be on your bag. First off, I got to give thanks that I'm living. Shout out to all the Pub Nation. Let's get it on Thanksgiving. Let's do exactly that. We just had a nice breakdown from our Sharpie bets on how he is attacking this game. 
I am on the under 41 and a half. I'm still like, just staring at this Bears line, just staring at it. I mean, they taking the juice off is a pretty nice situation to be in, sitting there at, at minus three plus 100. I don't think I'm going to do it. But to let you guys know, our Ron Crawford spreadsheet play of the day is the Chicago Bears. Ron Crawford had surgery yesterday, successful surgery. And he's home. He's trying to cook a bird for his family. He's in a lot of pain. And his spreadsheet play today is the Chicago Bears. Millsy, the floor is yours. How are you getting paid in this first game on Thanksgiving, Bears Lions? All right, all right. You too nearly not to hear me, so I'm gonna speak it real clearly. Mill season money be the reason. Chicago gives up 244 yards passing. All right, injuries to the DB Tess Tabor. He's gone. They lost their main linebacker. He's not in the game. Sharpie, you said DeAndre Swift, right? I like where you're going with this. So I took him over four and a half receptions. All right, I got that at plus money, okay? I got that at plus 125. Check this out. He went over six games already. He has 53 total receptions. And he's averaging 6.5 targets on the season. DeAndre Swift is a gift. Over four and a half receptions. That's the first angle I'm attacking this uh, game. What was the juice associated with that? I got DeAndre Swift at plus 100 to be exact. Plus 100 over four and a half receptions. All right, keep rolling, Millsy. Keep rolling. All right, man. So the next, I mean, shout out to my man Big Show Picks, man. We were talking about this guy a little bit uh, before the season started. TJ Hawkinson. Over four and a half receptions, another guy I really like. It's The numbers are kind of similar. He hit that six times already out of his games. On top of it, Chicago defense – they let their tight ends eat. Andrews had eight receptions uh, last week for Baltimore. So I'm going with TJ Hawkinson, over four and a half receptions. And again, I got that at plus 102, averaging seven targets per game. Look for him to get it done. Over four and a half receptions at plus 102 for Hawkinson. I like it, Millsy. Keep rolling. Man, last but not least, man, I'm going with Montgomery. Anytime touchdown. I got that. Oh, man, I don't like giving out the juice, but sometimes, you know, you got to drink it when it's there. So I'm going with uh, Montgomery. Anytime touchdown. I got that at a minus 150. Shop around. You might can get a better line out there, maybe on Bavada or something like that. Or else, even uh, go on to mybookie.ag and use the promo code PUB Sports. Get your match bonus on. Find it on there. There we go. So looks from everyone across the board. The curb stomp play of the day is in. It's the under 42. We also have our man Lamont Williams, who has rolled with us from the very beginning. And his max bet was a must-know information uh, on our show. Must-know information. He's on Lions Money Line. Max bet is Lions Money Line. Oh man, this is gonna be. You know what? Uh, hey, this is if the Lions bad. win a game, it is today. I'm gonna tell you that. Hey, hey, hey and I, I'm gonna second you on that. I will say this: I'm not picking any teams, any sides. But I talked about this yesterday. Come on now, this is gonna be the historical day. You're gonna see the coach crying, eating a turkey. You're gonna see the Lions get their first wins versus the guys, Bears. Think about this: Who's you getting fired after this game, guys? Who's getting fired after this game? Is this team going to show up for him? I mean, I, I lean Lions first half money line. I'm not going to bet it. Lions have shown me they'll stay in the game until they're blown out. So I, I think as long as the game's close, they're going to fight for this W. No team wants to go 0-16. And, and Chicago knows Nagy's gone. So it, it, it Chicago's in a flux. I would not bet Chicago today. Uh, That's you, I me. hear you. I hear you, and it's so hard for me to not bet. See, the the way I live life and, and gamble is that, you know, there are no fairy tales in Shawshank. And I'm not going to sit here and be like, look, uh, you know, <laughs> Campbell's going to be crying, eating a turkey leg. And everyone's going to, I just have find that, you know, I just, if it happens, that's why we love sports so much, right? That's why we, but I cannot sit here and, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. 
But again, I can't get I can't bet the Bears. Something's keeping me off betting the Bears. I can't wait to watch this game. Usually these bum fights are awful, but I can't wait to watch this football game. All right, let's review everybody's action before we move on to the next one. Sharpie has given us Swift over 32 and a half receiving yards. Both of the cappers that I'm sharing the screen with right now are selfless cappers that you should follow on Twitter. They both put out their plays nonstop. And Sharpie already moved on Swift. Rush and receiving yards over one uh, 105 and a half at minus 115 at Bovada. He also moved already on the Montgomery over 17 and a half attempts. But for our show's purposes, his best bet is over 32 and a half receiving yards. Millsy's come in and dropped a correlated bet with the DeAndre Swift look. Swift over four and a half receptions at plus 100. TJ Hawkinson over four and a half receptions at plus 102. Montgomery anytime TD at minus 150. Mike M. Curbstomp lines under 42. Lamont Williams, Detroit money line. Ron Crawford spreadsheet is on the Bears. And I've only moved on the under 41 and a half. Man, that was a great breakdown. I love it, you guys. Thank you so much. I got a little... Uh... Okay, beautiful. All right, let's move on to the next spot on the board. And this is another beauty. 4.30 p.m. Eastern, Las Vegas Raiders, 5-5, 2-2 five five, two two on the road at Dallas Cowboys, 7-3, 4-1 at home, AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. One of the things we talk about in sports is how the market corrects itself. Sometimes it takes too long to correct itself, and we take advantage of that, but they correct itself. Another thing is that these Raiders have this dark cloud hanging over their football team, and the initial money when they played the Bengals last week was Raiders money. There were big bets coming in on the Raiders because if you look, if you had models and if you were the syndicates, they don't care about the psychological aspects that are going on with the football team. They just care what the numbers are telling them. And if you were looking at the numbers, then you thought, yeah, the Raiders probably had value. And I told my family, I told my mom, I was like, don't look at the numbers. The numbers aren't important anymore. <clears throat> just bet the Bengals. And it was very easy. But now we're sitting here with the Raiders at where they should be, at plus seven and a half. And I came so close to betting them last night, and I still may bet them today. We've heard that C.D. Lamb is out. That's a huge deal. We expected him to be out, but then they kept saying in the media that he was about to clear protocol. So I'm the dumb Lamb fuck who thought he was going to play. I thought he was playing. That well, they made it sound like that. I get it. Like they completely made it sound like that that he was. They playing. put him back into the game last week. Crazy. So uh, I moved. If it was if it was Patrick Mahomes, he'd be out there. <laughs> I moved on the under fifty and a half. It went up to fifty one and a half, and I was like, I get it. You know, CD's out there now. He's not out there, and it's back to fifty and a half. I really like this under. I really like this under. A Kwiatkowski out for the third straight game for the Raiders, but these are two somewhat healthy squads. Uh, we do know that Demarcus Lawrence is going to be back probably next week versus Saints. We also know that Randy Gregory is trying to come back as well. But other than that, it's you know two pretty healthy squads. And I love this spot. So I've got a bunch of numbers and, and breakdowns that I've already delivered on the Tuesday show that I may add in, but it's more important here to hear what our guests have to say and how they're getting paid on this. We'll start with Sharpie here, Chicago, or oh, sorry, uh, Vegas Raiders against the Dallas Cowboys, Thanksgiving Thursday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern. Let me just set the table. So we'd set it, move back to 15 and a half. The spread is sitting at seven and a half. And when we go over to the cash flow in this spot, we have 60,000 387 tickets in. Holy shit, this is changing so fast, by the way, you guys. So there another 10,000 tickets just came in on the Chicago-Detroit game. And the big bets have come back in on Detroit. So just in that, what, 20 minutes, 50 minutes, 54% of the tickets down Detroit, 61% of the cash. And more money's coming in on the under in that Chicago-Detroit game, now 74% of the cash. In this Vegas-Dallas game, we have 35% of the tickets on Vegas and 47% of the cash. You have 62% of the tickets and 87% of the cash on the under. Let's hear what Sharpie has to say. Take it away. Yeah, let's get into it, guys. Just like last week with Joe Mixon, it's the fucking Raiders, guys. They're the 29th versus the rush in the league. They're allowing 132 yards a game, and they're not getting any fucking better. So what are we going to do here? 
We're going to look into a few things here. My best bet is going to be Pollard's rush and receiving over 58 and a half at minus 114 on FanDuel. It's going to be a Zeke day and a Pollard day. I think they both are going to eat. And I want the more explosive back who can get me technically 60 yards on one play. We know Pollard's going to get at least eight carries and at least four passes thrown his way. No C.D. Lamb? Even better. No Cooper? Even better. Guess what? Pollard's going to be more involved in the pass game. They're going to script game plays. They might even put this motherfucker out into the slot. So last week, they had both running backs on the field at the same time. I see a lot of that more happening. And to back it up, shout out to the man Big Show, because, uh, yeah, we're going to pound this one into the dirt, guys. Elliot attempts over 14 and a half minus 115 on DK. Here and motherfucking why. Every game the Cowboys have won, he's got over 14 and a half attempts, guys. Are the Cowboys going to beat the Raiders today? Uh, let me tell you another stat. Cowboys are 3-0 and ATS after every loss this year. So take that as you will. Cowboys going to smash. Cowboys going to run. Cowboys going to eat. It's fucking turkey day. What does Zeke do on turkey day? He does this. So did you have any concern with his ankle histrionics in last week's game against the Chiefs? Yes, I was fucking scared like a little bitch all week. And that's why I first played Pollard. But then the more I read up and read up, like Zeke's ready. Zeke's, re Zeke's good to go. Let's go over these numbers again. Uh, Zeke over 14 and a half attempts at what, Juice? Minus 115. And Pollard over uh, receiving rush, rush yards? It is 58 and a half, and it was minus 114 on FanDuel. 58 and a half, minus 114. <clears throat> now, you know, we talk about some of the sort of the negativity that, that we kind of in, it gets instilled with us as gamblers uh, for a long period of time. And, and we've been just destroying fading the public and fading what they see last week. And I just have this feeling and, and I'm, I'm thinking of acting on it, although you have scared me. I just have this feeling that the Raiders can keep this within seven and that America is going to lose a ton of cash today and the books are going to get richer. That is my it feeling. can happen. I, I have this weird feeling Marcus Mariota is the fucking – he's going to be a star today, bro. I've been reading so many reports about this new coach talking about they want to get him in. And they've always said they wanted to involve him in, but they've never fucking packaged him. We've got a new coach here, so maybe he actually does make a few packages for this guy. And if that does happen, that's so advantage Raiders. Like, you can't game plan for that. Yeah, I don't think that's – I don't think Bisacci is – a. I think he's just a really likable guy. I don't think he's a, you know, a play calling wizard. I, I, I do think that'd be a great angle for him to do. I just don't. Derek Carr's been finish. bad. He's been really bad, and they've been clamoring for it. Ah, uh, what an exciting breakdown! Star Child says I want to go contrarian and take the Lions game over. Uh, you know, to be honest, if there was offense in that I'm, I'm not sitting here enormously confident on my under 41 and a half in that game I, I get it with the idea that the game plan I have but you know it, it just some if things went wild in that game I wouldn't be gobsmacked let's move over to Millsy we have the first two spots bet by our sharpie let's see what Millsy's going to do in game two 4 30 p.m eastern Raiders Cowboys all right, man. Dallas is coming off a disappointing loss to Kansas City Chiefs. But overall, I mean, they're only allowing 19 points on there. Uh, on the other hand, they're third in scoring in the NFL. Uh, Raiders are 26 in scoring in the NFL. So it looks like this game should be going towards the over. Um, that's one way I lean. Not making that my official bet. When it comes down to it, man, it's kind of like we're piggybacking off the same plays, man. We're talking about Thanksgiving. What's the image we all know? We know Zeke just going eat, eat, gobble, gobble, hopping in the Salvation Army uh, bucket after he scores a touchdown. So what am I on? I'm on Zeke Elliott over 63 rushing yards. All right, you can get that even at as low as 60 and a half yards rushing over, depending on what book you use. When it comes down to it, I think a stat that my man Big Show told me, he said my boy Zeke Elliott averages 80 yards rushing at home. 
So if he's averaging that and they're giving me at 63, it's going to be a Zeke day, man. He's going to eat. I don't care if he's banged up. He's going to be out there. It's Thanksgiving. He's going to be out there with the jersey cut, showing off the eight pack and everything. So I got uh, Zeke over 63 rushing yards as one play on there. And that's the official play. Over 63 and a half rush yards at minus 110. Uh, John yeah, Stevenson, and not- to back that, oh, yeah, sure. to back that real quick before you go ahead, go yeah, to chat. I just want to just, uh, John Stevenson, uh, we get that something is going on with you right now, but don't fill up our chat uh, with that. We're capping football here right now. I won't bounce you at this point, but just it's, it's spammy. Okay, take it away, Sharpie. To back uh, Mills' thing, his, his prop is that he is at 60 to 63 and a half. He averages 69 and a half yards a game, guys, and 88 and a half at home. So he shines in front of the home stands is what he was getting at there. So I don't get it just like last week with Mixon. They keep undervaluing these running backs' as average yards per game versus the worst rush defense. So just a stat to throw there. I love the under in this game. Love it. Absolutely love it. And I don't know if I want to mess with it by taking the Raiders at plus seven and a half, but I just have a feeling that they can stay close. I love your running back props. I find this is a pretty easy offense from a passing standpoint, not including the running backs from a passing standpoint to defend. If it's Gallup and Schultz that you have to worry about. Do you think you can get a better line live? On the total, if you want on the Ra- on the Raiders, if you like the Raiders, do you not think the Cowboys go up at this at, at some point and you get better than that seven and a half? I think the Cowboys go up. Yeah, yeah. I look. I hear that, I hear that, but I just without Cooper and C.D. Lamb Ooh. stretching your defense. Damn, I don't think they're that hard to play. Now no, last week they were they showed they were different offense without Cooper. They were they different. were different offense. Yeah, yeah, they lacked. And uh, Gallup, I mean, he's okay and all, but I mean, I don't know if he's gonna pick up that slack. And another thing, I mean, on that rushing prop, the Raiders allowed 132 yards. They gave Joe Mixon two touchdowns last game. So, yeah, it, it could just be a Zeke show out there, folks. Uh, you know, uh, I love – this is great. Great having you guys both on the show. I love it. Uh, very quickly, uh, Dan Kelly saying, I just popped in to tell you that your take on the Bruins was the difference between a plus and minus day for me yesterday. I'm grateful for JTB. Good luck. Dan Kelly, your team total under first half on the Orlando Magic was a, a big difference in my night, a big difference in my night, and that was all you, and you did that for me, and that's why this show is special because we work together to defeat the Jews, and that's the perfect example. So – Thank you, Dan, for that magic team total under in the first half. It was a nice, easy, relaxing cash in NBA, and I haven't been having many of them. All right, let's review action here quickly. We have from our Sharpie, Pollard over 58.5, receiving a rush yards at minus 114. Elliott over 14.5, running attempts at minus 115. Zeke Elliott for our Millsy over 63.5, rush yards at minus 110. And I'm on the under 50.5. The curb stomp play today is on the Cowboys minus 7. I, I'm so confident in the under 15 and a half that I don't think I want to mess with it with the Raiders plus seven and a half, but God, I got one other that... play on the opposing side. Okay. I got one other play on the opposing side real quick. It's just because, all right, this guy owes me. And I have a, I have a thing of that. When a player owes me, he owes me, man. So I'm back on it, man. Hunter Renfro for over five and a half receptions. Last game, he only had four targets. And guess what? He caught all four of them. All right. He hit that six games already. He has 56 uh, receptions. He's averaging 6.5 targets. Uh, Cowboys defense give up 270 yards. Cowboys best defender, Diggs. He's not going to be on him. He doesn't line up on those receivers. Same thing with Tyreek Hill last week. Tyreek Hill killed his reception prop. I look for Renfro to do the same damn thing, just like that Genuine song. Show me what you like. Owe me. Well, point is you owe me. So I'm on Hunter Renfro over five and a half receptions. A little bit juice. Minus 145. Shop around for the best line. Minus 145. All right. that That is locked in. Locked in. Okay. Uh, let's roll on. Great, great. Oh, by the way, very quickly, uh, Babano gave out his plan for Thanksgiving. It's a money line parlay. Cowboys, Bills. 
Cowboys, Bills, money line parlay. He got minus 115. 115. All right, let's move on to the third game of our Thanksgiving glory. Third game of our Thanksgiving glory. Buffalo Bills, 6-4, and 3-2 and two on the road at New Orleans. Saints, 5-5, and 2-2 five, two and two at home. Caesar Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana. This is a spot that I have not moved on. Bills opened up as four and a half point favorites. Now they are six and a half point. Fi- oh, by the way, by the way, Pinnacle just moved the Chicago Detroit game to two and a half. Jesus, that's wild. The two Bears. Whoa, wow. And then the total here in Buffalo, New Orleans opened up at 46. We have 45s and 45 and a halves on the board. When we go over to the cash flow in this spot, 61,887 tickets in. 73% of the tickets and 84% of the cash on the bills. 66% of the tickets and 62% of the cash is on the over. We have quick injury review here. We have for the Saints, Kamara out. Did not practice all week. A lot of us expected him to be out. He's going to be out. Also, no all-pro right tackle Ryan Ramchick and defensive end Marcus Davenport. It looks like Tron Armstead could be in the lineup, and they will need him badly. Mark Ingram did return to practice on Wednesday, but he's questionable right now, as is Marcus, as I said, Marcus Davenport questionable as well. So some tricky things here. But my basic idea, and you can catch our big breakdown on YouTube right now for that Tuesday show with Bobano and C Mac, and I don't want to go over these things one more time. But my basic idea is that that if the Bills getting right offensively in the Superdome. It's hard for me to wrap my head around. Have the Saints given up? Have the players given up? I can't answer that question. I do not think this is a Bills get-right spot, though. And so I have not moved. I have not bet on this spot. We're going to get this one started with Millsy. Buffalo Bills, New Orleans Saints. Mills, what's your look here? All right, so just some little notable trends on here. Saints were three and six in the ATS the last nine games uh, played in week 12. The Bills are 13, six and one ATS in the last 20 games. Bears are seven and oh ATS in the last seven games facing any NFC teams. When it comes down to it, too, the Saints, they just lost their third straight game after losing their uh, star quarterback, Jameis Winston. He's done for the season. Now, no Alvin Kamara out there. I mean, where are the points going to come from? Where are the reception is going to come from? I don't know. So I'm on the Buffalo Bills, man. I'm going to keep it real, real easy. Not too greasy, but the game's going to need me. Beasley, over four and a half receptions at a plus 102. Check it out, man. He went over five games. He's the easiest type receiver to get receptions out there. He doesn't got to go for 10 yards to get a catch. He just has to move about a yard or two. And I look for him to go over four and a half receptions on her. So that's the official play that I'm on. I'm on Beasley. Over four and a half receptions at a plus 102. And last but not least, I got Stephon Diggs anytime touchdown at a plus 127. Uh, I'm sorry, at plus 127. Let's get the numbers right. Plus 127 on Diggs and over four and a half receptions for Beasley. Let's send it over to our Sharpie here, Bills Saints. Take it away. Yeah, let's get into some stats first, guys. We got the Bills are second versus the pass, only allowing 180 yards a game, ninth versus the rush, 101. But like I've been saying, if you talk to me in, on a daily basis, those are some faulty-ass numbers, guys, and they played some weak-ass competition. So take take those very lightly, in my opinion. Saints are 22nd versus the pass. They're top three versus the rush. They're legit versus the rush. They are really stout up front. And that goes into the play that I'm on, and I'm going to give a best bet for the show because best bets, they've been winning, man. And it's just like I'm dumb for not just betting them because the numbers are hitting at a crazy-ass side. So let's get into Josh Allen, guys. Josh Allen, he's the man here and why. Like I said, Saints are 22nd versus the pass, third versus the rush. What does he do? He runs the ball, guys. This guy's hit 32 and a half yards, six out of 10 games. But wait, wait, Sharpie, you're a number guy, right? You goddamn know it, right? So I dig into the numbers. 
Three of those four games were blowouts, guys. I don't expect this game to be a blowout. So technically, he's hit that number six out of seven times in a close game. So we're going to go Josh Allen, best bet, over 32 and a half rushing yards. at a, It was a minus, minus 114 on FanDuel. And I tweeted out, I'm on his pass and rush over 310 and a half, guys. I think it's a Josh Allen turkey leg day. Um, Saints are bad versus the pass. And this guy can rocket the ball, guys. We know they can't run the ball. That's their Achilles heel. They suck rushing the ball. Well, Josh Allen doesn't suck rushing the ball, but he's also their quarterback. So we're going to just ride Josh Allen to the bank today, guys. Hey, I like that a lot. Right? I like that a lot because you know that saying out there, when you got two quarterbacks, you don't got one. They have two running backs, which means they really don't got one. So look for Josh Allen again. What was the Josh Allen pass and rush number, Sharpie? It was 310.5 minus 115. Minus 115. Very, very interesting. So I guess the, the main question that I need to understand, and it's bother, it's, and maybe we, oh. I can't wrap my head around it, is what happened with the number one rush defense in the league in the Saints allowing 242 yards on the ground to the Eagles? And I don't get it. I mean, it just it just didn't fall. Jalen Hurts. That's a totally different type of running back, type of offense. That's a spread offense. It's it's they were clicking. They had a bad day, in my opinion. And and no one's bringing up that Trotman's on the IR now. They lost their tight end too. Mm -hmm. So they're 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 falling apart. And the books knew that Kamara was going to be out with that minus four. And the public overreacted, in my opinion, and went the other way with it. But I mean. I think the Bills could the, – the Saints hang in there or at least backdoor cover it or keep it – I think the game's close. Yeah, God. So I guess one of the finishing thoughts here, because I, I found both the Raiders and the Saints appealing. If I do move on the Raiders, it's because they have 34% of the tickets and 46% of the cash on them. And that's just comforting. For the Saints, they have 27% of the tickets on them, but just 16% of the cash. And that does not make me comfortable. But how all. often is that in a Cowboys game where all that type of money is on the Cowboys? They're heavily, especially this year, they're betted. And they're yeah. still covering. The books hate the fucking Cowboys. I agree. I, I agree. <laughs> right. I mean, they're, they're like that's usually the team they're making money off of because everyone bets them and they lose. They're betting them this year and they're covering, and they're three and zero ATS off a loss. That 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 means something. Not that their coach is anything to write home about. The the Troutman injury is you know massive. You had his receiving yards over. I believe it was that was the bet you had last week, and he caught five passes for 58 yards and a touchdown and then limps off the field in the fourth quarter. It's a sprained MCL, so he's going to be out four to six weeks. That's massive. You're, you're absolutely right that that is just a – you know, this is an offense where you can't really trust the receivers. Uh, Traquan Smith caught five passes for 64 yards. He looks okay. And then you have Mark Ingram who's hurting. So look at all the stars in that game, and they got killed. So the stars of that game were what? Ingram goes 16 carries for 88 yards. Uh, he did lose a fumble, and he's questionable. You have Marcus Davenport with 10 tackles, one and a half sacks, four quarterback hits. He's banged up and questionable. Uh, you know, uh, you have Troutman with the five catches, 58 yards touchdown. He's out. And we're th forget about their number one. No Mike Thomas. Mike Thomas never came back. So, I mean, shit. Yeah, but they've been dealing with that all year. But, you, yeah, it's a big – it's an important point. So with all that being said, I do not think that this is a uh, – sorry, my uh, son looking for a titty. I hope he finds it fast. Uh, Me too. So, hey. Uh, we're going to – It's the story can, of my life, Jimmy. Find, can you guys find I've been... a different spot? Okay. Can you just find a different spot for him to find that titty? Thank you. Thank you. A little laugh. You hear that laugh at the end. <laughs> he said, you. yeah, dad, yeah. Are you leaning towards the over or the under on this one? Uh, sorry, say that again, Millsy. What are you leaning towards on the score? Are you leaning towards the over or the under on this one? You know, in all honesty, in this spot, I don't 
have a fair idea or angle on whether the Saints are just going to let go. Because the number one rush defense in the league allowed 242 yards. I don't see how they're going to get points. But I don't think this is a get-right spot for the Bills in the Super, Super Bowl, Superdome with everybody losing their mind. In the, in the, I mean, he's not going to be able to call audibles at line of scrimmage. So this is just screaming for me to do nothing. You know, I, I just do nothing. I don't want to – I don't I don't feel like I have an angle that I can put money on here. And after we just – after the last two minutes, I guess – I guess the Bills' first half is probably the best bet. And it was a bet that I almost made I, – and I could have got the three heavily juiced, and now I believe it's three and a half, which I don't like. That's such a big hook. But you have to think that if the Bills can script their first 20 plays, then the – Superdome crowd won't affect Allen too much and they should be able to take care of business. But I missed the three to three and a half. And, and I don't even want to give a side on a total at this point because I don't know what the hell's going on with the Saints and I don't want to lead anybody in, in a direction. So what do you think, Mills? Man, I lean the I lean the over a little bit just because, I mean, this is one of those games to where, you know, I think points could just come out of nowhere. You know, like like you said, the Bills, they're not playing up to their par. They're supposed to be Super Bowl caliber right now. And, I mean, a record like that, shit, this could be an easy game for the Saints to get right. They're on an 0-3 losing streak right now. Turn it all the way around on Thanksgiving. Still have a little bit of uh, playoff race in there in that division. So, I actually lean for the points to be a little bit over in this game. It's an interesting number at 45 and a half. And we're sitting here with 66% of the tickets and 62% of the cash on the over. And it's dropped a point, a point and a half. So I, I, you know what? Thankfully, thankfully, and I love both of your guys analysis and how much fun you make capping. Thankfully you guys have looks on this game because I'm going to sit here just, just fucking, you know, deer in the headlights. So this is what we have here. We have mills on Beasley over four and a half receptions at plus one Oh two. Diggs TD anytime at plus 127. Sharpie has Allen rush yards over 32 and a half at minus 114. Allen passing rush yards at plus or at 310 and a half at minus 115. Brady says bet this under. I just what if what if the Saints have given up and the Bills put up a bunch of points early and then they kind of play very lax defensively in the second half? I I get I and well, Razor Sharp. Oh, sorry, if they have on. a big lead, they will put their backup in in the fourth. I've seen them do it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Think about it. They, their backup is the fucking uh, number two drafted quarterback a couple of years ago, Trubisky. So they definitely put him in the game to get some uh, running time in there if they're blowing them out. Razor Sharp Picks has moved on the Bill Saints under 45 for his best bet of the day. It feels like it's – I guess after it all is said and done – I don't know how the Saints are going to score points. And I don't know how the Bills are going to score points in the second half. So with that being said, I guess I guess I'm moving sort of towards the under and look, I want to be drunk and I want to want action. All right, let's review the other spots on the board from our experts here. In the game that pops off in 11 minutes, Sharpie's on DeAndre Swift over 32 and a half receiving yards. Mills is on Swift over four and a half receptions to plus 100. TJ Hawkinson over four and a half receptions plus 102. Montgomery TD at minus 150. And then if you go on to Twitter, I retweeted Sharpie's tweet from yesterday. That was when he was on Montgomery over 17 and a half attempts. That's moved to 18 and a half. And then Sharpie is also on the Swift Russian receptions over 105.5. And then the curb stomp play of these lines under 42. I'm on the lines under lines bears under 41 and a half. Lamont Williams is on the Detroit money line and Ron Crawford spreadsheet play of these on the bears. So next up we have the Raiders spot and we have the curb stomp play of the day. Number two Cowboys minus seven. I really think I'm going to move on the Raiders. I think I'm going to move on the Raiders in the next couple hours. I'm already on the under 15 and a half and I love it. But Bono's got a money line parlay. Cowboys Bills at minus 115. Sharpie's on Pollard over 58 and a half re uh, receiving and rushing yards at minus 114. He's on Zeke over 14 and a half attempts at minus 115. Millsy's on Zeke over 63 and a half rush yards at minus 110. And Hunter Renfro. <laughs> I thought we'd lost I thought we'd lost Sharpie there for a sec. I was looking down, I looked up, and I was like, uh, 
and Hunter Renfro over five and a half receptions at minus 145. Uh, God, thank you guys so much. You guys work very, very well together, and you make it a lot of fun to cap. Uh, we'll go to Millsy. Millsy, thank you for rolling with us, making your betting with the bag debut. Any last words for these cappers supporting the show? Hey, yo, yo, yo. Times like this, I'm going to just tell you like this, man. Family matters. Get with your favorite cappers. You know what I mean? Uh, F the rest out. Pup Sports Radio, we the best out. I love it. Follow our man at MMA Locker Room. Sharpie, thank you for joining us here on Thanksgiving, my man. Love capping with you. Uh, any last words for the cappers supporting the show? Yeah, man. Thank you all for coming out today. Smash like if you haven't. All that good shit. Take fucking pictures, guys. You never know when life's going to end for somebody. Get with your family. Take fucking pictures. Enjoy today. Get crunk. Bet these plays we've given you and get some good pie tonight. There he is. Follow him at Sharpie's Bets. Man, this is fun. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you. We move our attention to NCAA football, and we got two beauty games for us to attack. Let's get right to work. I love both of these football games, and I haven't moved on them. I am coming off a 4-0 day on Tuesday. So now, you know, as I got off to a great start. Then I got hit. Right now, I'm 53 and 48, hitting at 52.5%, down 0.3 units ROI, 0.30%, average line minus 111. And let's attack these games. We start at 3.30 p.m. Eastern, Fresno State Bulldogs, 8 and 3, 5 and 2 in the Mountain West, the San Jose State Spartans, 5 and 6, 3 and 4 in the Mountain West. We're in San Jose, California, 65 Fahrenheit, partly cloudy, 4 miles per hour is the wind. Uh, there's Dutch Boy Fresh in the house. Great to see you, Dutchy. Let's move over to NCAA football and see what we are dealing with from a market perspective and move over to spreads and totals. First off, Fresno State opening up as seven and a half point favorites. That has moved to seven. So that's moved to seven. And then from a total scenario, opened up at 52. Now we have 52 and a half and we have 53s. So let's move over to the cash flow in this spot. We have 7,553 tickets in, 43% of the tickets are on San Jose State, and 76% of the cash. Wow, that's really telling. That's really telling. Is Nick Starkle going to get his shit together? He's been so bad. Then he got hurt, and he's come back and been even worse. Obviously, this betting public believes that San Jose State is a home dog that should be looked into 60% of the tickets on the over 61% of cash on the over there's dab fen in the house great to see you dab fen and mike joining us as well all right let's break this down the battle for the valley the battle for the valley it's going to be on big national audience on fs1 bulldogs still alive for the west division title they need a win over the spartans and they need san diego state to lose to boise state on friday all very possible. That would tie both teams at 6-2. and two, And Fresno owns the tiebreaker with that 30-20 win over the Aztecs on October 30th. Uh, that was a great casher for us. Uh, if you guys remember that DJ Big Boss was all over. And Hayner took care of business. It was a great, great casher and a great breakdown by our DJ Big Boss. Fresno State bounced back from getting beaten up badly 40-14 at home to Boise as four-point dogs by beating up the New Mexico Lobos at home 34-7 as 24 point favorites a uh, mike is on san jose plus seven the market is certainly telling us that's the look cabbies on fresno state first half minus four mississippi plus a half minus 110 and mississippi money line plus 120 pierre swore saying uconn looking tired you know that was a possibility craig cornell in the house harold williams said i almost bet san jose well harold let's see if this if let's see if this breakdown moves us towards it let's see if it moves us towards it so let's talk about hayner first off he throws for 300 yards against the lobos who cares? I think the one thing about that game that was interesting was they couldn't run the ball on the New Mexico Lobos. 2.4 yards per carry. If they can't run the ball against the Lobos, they become a pretty easy offense to defend, even though they have this NFL caliber quarterback in Hayner. Hayner is second to Carson Strong in the Mountain West in passing yards with 3,467, 28 touchdowns, completing 66.8% of his passes. Fresno State's been hard to run against. Their defense has been good. They only allow 3.7 yards per carry. 
San Jose State comes in off this just horrific 48-17 home loss to Utah State as four-point favorites. They were up 14-0 in the second quarter before getting dominated. They opened that game with like a 55-yard interception return, cashed another touchdown in the beginning of the second quarter, and then just got destroyed. Starkle's second game back from injury, he looked awful. 19-29, 138 yards in the pick. He's completed 50, 53% of his passes, nine touchdowns and seven interceptions in six games. What's going on? What's going on with this San Jose State team made so much money last year. They were the darlings of the Mountain West. They've been awful all year. And Starkle's been an absolute bum. It's so confusing. What the hell's going on with Starkle to create this situation? Last week, Utah State averaged 3.13, sorry, 13.2 yards per completion. Fresno State leads the Mountain West with 10 plays of 50 plus yards. This this would all lead you to believe that Fresno State would run over them. But the market's not telling us that. And the Sharps are betting San Jose State to bounce back at home. So let's go back to what's been working in the NFL over the last four weeks. Bet against what you saw last week. Bet against what the public saw last week. That's clearly what's happening here. And the more we talk about it, the more I figure that this is the spot. Dad Fenn says, do you truly believe Hayner is an NFL quarterback? Ah, it's tough, Daphne. I want to watch. He's going to have – this is a big game. He's going to have some big games coming up. I want to watch him when all eyes are on him on a bull, in a bull situation. If he even plays. Who knows if he'll even bother playing. I don't know. Daphne, that's a very, very good question. Okay. So, God, the market's telling us to bet San Jose State. Now, the question is – can you – are you going to sit here and say this is the chance for San Jose State to get a bowl game? If they can win here or come – win here, they get a bowl game. If they lose here, no bowl game. And this is a battle for the Valley at home and that they have to play their best football. I think that's all possible. So you put a line through the Utah State game. Maybe they were looking ahead at this game. I guess that's all possible. Nick Starkle, is he just going to be a bum all year? You know, we've watched Fresno State get beaten up badly in a couple spots, and they couldn't run the ball. If, if they can't run the ball against the Lobos, then San Jose State can play nickel and dime and, and defend the pass and keep it close. I guess that's the spot. Mike M says San Jose State first half under. Let's look at this total one more time, sitting at 53 or 52 and a half and 60, 61% on the over. Again, if if Starkle has something in his bag right now, and the Lamont saying Connecticut losing right now 24-14, let's give it time. Let's give it time. I know Max is losing the shit watching it, so let's give that time. I think that San Jose State is the play here, and that's what the market's telling us. And again, do you want to just focus on the market and not the actual statistical analysis? I think that I will here. All right, let's move on to the Egg Bowl. God, this is going to be so much fun. We have the Egg Bowl at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Number nine, and this one's going to be absolutely nuts. This game is shaping up to be. Mississippi State, two and a half point favorites. Number eight ranked Ole Miss. And Mississippi State total sitting at 64 and a half or 65. Let's take a look at where the cash lies in this game. We have 43% of the tickets on Mississippi State and 66% of the cash. Then you have 39% of tickets on the under and 76% of cash on the under. Wow, this game's going to be fun. Davis Wade Stadium in Starkville, Mississippi. Ole Miss Rebels 9-2, 5-2 two in the SEC. Mississippi State Bulldogs 7-4, and 4-3 in the SEC. 55 Fahrenheit, light rain, 3 miles per hour, and the rain's supposed to stop pretty quick if it even is there at kickoff. Supposed to stop right away if it is. The 118th time, 118th time these two are facing off. Last year's 31-24 win for Ole Miss. The teams combined for 1,029 yards. And you have to think that more is in store here. Whew. This is going to be fun. Ole Miss comes in off their third straight double-digit win. It was ugly, but clearly they were looking past the, at this game. 31-17 at home over Vanderbilt as 35 and a half point favorites. And Vanderbilt held on to the ball for 38 minutes and 57 seconds. 
Rebels are ranked fifth in the FBS with 517.5 yards per game. Matt Corral is a beast. So this is his final regular season game. This is his last Egg Bowl. Expected to be in the NFL next year. And last year against Mississippi State, he goes 24-36 for 385 yards and a pair of touchdowns. Two picks. It was the most yards passing by a Rebels quarterback in the Egg Bowl. Arthur Mead Jr., like in Mississippi State, got a minus one. Great job. Uh, Mike on the other side with Ole Miss. Lamont, thank you for stopping by the show, my man. So, Corral can run. Throw him for 3,105 yards, 19 touchdowns. He's ran for 552 and 10 touchdowns. And he's a Heisman Trophy candidate. Ole Miss can run. So they have him. He can run. They have Early, who's run for 643 yards. They have Snoop, run for 561. They average a league best 231.1 rushing yards. And that ranks six nationally. Dontario Drummond, 53 receptions, 786 yards and eight touchdowns. And he's been banged up this year. He's healthy and ready to go for this giant game. He missed the Liberty game, hamstring injury. He returned to the lineup. He's got a touchdown pass in each of the last two games. Braylon Sanders missed two games with a lower body injury. He's back in action. This is a healthy team that's dangerous. Harold Williams took Ole Miss. And Cab said, I said it, but Ole Miss first half plus a half and full game money line. I think that Kiffin told Corral to stop running so much, stop calling so many designed quarterback runs. This is going to be fun. Okay, so now let's move over to Will Rogers. God, he's good. The sophomore. Super sophomore. So they win at Auburn 43-34 two weeks ago. as five and a half point dogs. Will Rogers goes 44-55 or 415 yards and six touchdowns. Then he follows that up by going 28 for 34 for 391 yards, five touchdowns, and a 55-10 win over Tennessee State. That fence is Ole Miss is so good. Two losses are Alabama and Auburn. With hotty toddy tonight. Ooh, this is going to be a fun game. So let's go back to Will Rogers. What a quarterback he is. 4,113 yards, 34 touchdowns. Last year, he threw for 440 yards, freshman record, and threw in Oxford in November. And he's throwing for over 400 yards four times this season. 16 touchdowns and one interception in his last four games. Makai Polk is going to break Fred Ross's single-season record of 88 catches with one more reception. Bulldogs are ranked third in the SEC against the run. So I think the reason why people are backing the Bulldogs here is simply because... <laughs> Um, simply because of their defense. They have a defense third in the SEC against around 96 yards allowed per game, fourth in total defense at 325.6. And then Ole Miss has the second league second best pass rush with 37 sacks. So, so this is very, very, very difficult. And the sharp action is on Mississippi State. But do you want to go against Kiffin? And the sharp action is on the under. Damn, this is going to be fun. Ahem. I have a play. Oh, oh, can we give a? Can we make that a um, special bulletin? Uh, this just in. Potatoes, tomatoes, lamb, rams, hogs, dogs, chicken, turkeys, rabbits. You name it! Look. It's Thanksgiving, Jim! I got beans, Look greens, at it, potatoes, Jim. tomatoes, lamb, rams, hogs, dogs, beans, greens, potatoes, we're here, tomatoes, Jim. chicken, turkeys, rabbits. Alright, Jim, we're here. I'm ready for the play. Are you ready for the play, Jim? I am now. I am now, baby! I am now! Guess what, Jim? I'm following the Sharps. I'm on the Egg Bowl. I'm on Mississippi State here. They've got a better defense. 
all the hype with Matt Corral, you would think that uh, they would be favored. Uh, and I also think that the Egg Bowl is one of those games with the home team probably usually has the advantage and probably usually wins. I think the Cowbells will be out in force. Mississippi State wins. Uh, kind of poo-poos a great season for Mississippi State. And uh, hopefully they don't play in the in the Sugar Bowl against Oklahoma State. Can I give you another play, Jim? You can, but let's talk about – is it in the Egg Bowl? No, that is Okay, not. so let's talk about else. the Egg Bowl a little more. If Mississippi State wins, do you think that means the under cashes? Yeah, I do, actually. Yeah, I think this is a pretty low total, honestly, in, ge- in general. I'm used to seeing uh, Ole Miss in like the 70s. Uh, but I think uh, if they do win this game, it will be an under-type game. They can't they can't get into a shootout with Mississippi State. They know that, and uh, that's that, that'll be their whole thing. Like, you know, they'll be going in like, we can't let them get in a shootout, blah, 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 ball control, keep Matt Corral off the field, all that kind of stuff, you know. But Mike Leach, we all know Mike Leach, though. This is... You we we forget, and I, I often forget this. Mike Leach is the coach from Mississippi State. Now that's not really his mo. His mo is also Bing Bang Boom Fire offense. But I think that uh, the defense, especially, will be just focused. Like we play this type of offense all year. We've seen uh, Matt Corral type quarterbacks and in, in like uh, Bryce or whatever his name is, the guy from Alabama. I forgot his name already. But uh, I, I think that Mississippi comes in there. The defense does enough, and uh, they get the dub. Hopefully by three. This total opened up at 61. It's now up to 65. So I think that it's going to keep going up. So I agree with you. I think wow, this is Will Rogers' time to shine. And Mississippi State at home, I think, is the key angle that you spoke of. So yeah, I'm going to roll with you on this. And I'm going to wait to take the under. Pinnacle just moved it to 65. Let's see where it is here quickly. Where I would bet it it is at 64 and a half. So I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. This is so fun. Uh, So, yeah, I'm I'm going to roll with you. This is also the Razor Sharp Picks favorite spot in the world. The betting against the ranked team. Usually the ranked team is the slight favorite. But he loves betting against the ranked team when the ranked team is on the road. I love it. I love it. So I'm going to roll with it. So, uh, but let's give you your action here first. What is the best or what is the line that you've got here? Uh, I got a minus 110. Your basic minus 110 for your two and a half. All right. I'm very Locked basic. In. Sorry. Do you think that it would be wiser to bet a first half under rather than a full game under because of the crazy hijinks that could be in play late in the game? Uh, honestly, I would, I would rather take the full game and take all the points. You know, uh, I, I would expect these teams to start fast and end a little more reserved and sweaty than, than uh, the reverse. You know, there's obviously less pressure beginning of the game. Like, I, I could easily see, a, you know, Mississippi State, two plays, 80-yard touchdown kind of drive immediately, and then Mississippi State, Mississippi State kind of does the same. So I, I would rather have the full game and take all of the points, personally. And that's from the junior capping division, too. I just want to remind you of that. <laughs> I like it. I like it. All right, there we go. Mississippi State minus two and a half for Jose. Say hey, play of the day. What's your next one? The next one, Jim. I'm taking the Raiders. I have, I have, or I've seen too many times the Cowboys just get their shit pumped on Thanksgiving and just ruin a bunch of Thanksgivings here. Last year, they got crushed by the Washington almost football team, I believe. And I just I see the Raiders. Maybe they don't win the game, but I I think the Raiders uh, keep it respectably close. All those players out for the Cowboys are gonna have to run the ball. Uh, I see this being like a, a four point game. Uh, Cowboys sneak away with a win. And uh, I I honestly, like I said, the guy would Cowboys get crushed on on uh, Thanksgiving all the time. I wouldn't be surprised if the Raiders just came in and stole this game. I think it would be hilarious. It would keep a tradition on of ruining. Thanksgiving's there, um, but I, I and I. By the way, I think all this Marcus Mariota talk is pretty crazy. I don't. I don't know about you. I think Marcus Mariota is horrible, horrible. 
yeah, I mean, if you want to bring him in just to surprise with a couple runs or bring him down around the, you know, the goal line. I, I keep hearing multiple podcasts I've heard like, yeah, Marcus Mariota might, might play some this week. I was like, why? J- Derek Carr is the franchise, whether you like it or not. And Marcus Mariota is horrid. But I, I need I need a, some Josh Jacobs today. I need some uh, White Hunter Renfro in there. I need all of those good juices, and I need a good Raiders defense to kind of show up and stifle the run because I'm sure they also know that all those guys are out, all the outside playmakers are out for the Cowboys. So it's time to focus on the run and let Dak Prescott uh, try to beat you with subpar uh, weapons, which seemingly has not done the last couple of weeks. I agree. Uh, Johnny K says that plus eight looks good. Yeah, let it keep going up. I'll I don't think it's going to keep no going up. It's now the seven and a half right now is juiced at, at 365. Yeah. So that, that's a clear sign right that this is not going to go up. Now we could sit back and wait and see what, but I, the last thing I want is to lose a seven and a half and end up having a seven. Cause I'll just, I'll be irate. Yeah. I'll take, I'll take the seven and a half uh, minus minus one fifteen currently on Bovada. I mean, uh, I think I said, Seven points, that's when I, I knew. Like, if we're getting over seven, then golden. Like, even if, if it's, like, a 24, uh, something, like, 21 or 21, seven, 14, we'll take that, no problem. Like, I, I expect this to be a kind of a tighter game, honestly. And, and uh, I I would not be surprised uh, if we're in a, a little touchdown sprinkle prop. A Deshaun Jackson touchdown today would not surprise me at all. I haven't heard his name. Everyone knows the Henry Henry Rod situation. They need a deep playmaker. How about they just try to throw it all to D Jax, who literally has made a career out of wanting run running one route. So I I like it. Can anybody tell me where the eights are? I don't see. Oh yeah, I would like I would like an eight, Mike or Johnny K. But I'll tell you what, the six and a halfs are gone in Buffalo, New Orleans. They're sevens now. Wow, that's wild. Well, yeah, I mean, who's the quarterback? Trevor Simeon's, again, horrid. Uh, Nate Dogg's daughter turned eight months yesterday. That's sweet. Uh, this is wonderful. Uh, yeah, Joseph Gomez says, Deshaun Jackson's 50, my guy. Yeah, I, uh, I, he is. I, I do not believe He caught that. a long touchdown earlier this year. What do you want from me? He did it with the Rams. Um, that This was great. Great, great work. I'd love to hear that uh, video once more time, and I probably should do a little uh, turkey or terrorist celebration to close out the show. What do you oh, think? boy. Yeah. Oh, boy. It's the, the most controversial show in this history. Look! Look! Look, Jimmy. I got We're going to hit all of our bets potatoes, today. Tomatoes, it's going to work grand, out for all of us. Dog, Max is hitting this turkeys, Yukon. We're going to come back. I hope Miami's winning the first half, too. I got beans, creams, potatoes, tomatoes, lamb, rams, raw, dog, beans, creams, I also potatoes, hope tomatoes, chicken, chicken, a tight end scores in this first beans, game, because I, I potatoes, bet all the tight ends to score the first raw, touchdown. Dog, beans, creams, potatoes, tomatoes, chicken, 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 beans, creams, potatoes, tomatoes, lamb, This is what we play raw, at Venice One Household beans, creams, on Thanksgiving. Tomatoes, this chicken, is what we chicken, do. Rack, yeah. That's what we do here, Jim. Good luck, Jose. Mississippi State minus two and a half at minus one ten, and the Raiders plus seven and a half at minus one ten in business. <laughs> they said, "Why does this song get me so hyped?" I get it. Uh, okay, you've well, had beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes. That's why. Let's... Have you had beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, Jim? I Chicken, have. turkey, ham. I haven't. I'm not going to get it today. I tell you that much, man. That yeah, much. Uh, the Thanksgiving in a Vietnamese household is. Uh, you know, lobster, which is great. But, well, yeah. I, I've never had lobster before in my life. Uh, as you might know, I'm a very picky eater. Uh, so I would not know. Well, your lobster's fucking delicious, buddy. I don't know what the hell you I've never had most seafoods. Well, you know fish. what? Maybe I'll order a side of lobster when you take us out for the steak dinners that you owe us all. So, yeah, how many people is it now? Uh, Bebsy, you... Four. Uh, okay, uh, Dutch and ski, right? <laughs> yeah, good, yeah. good. No, I, I, hey, Jim, guess what? I'm gonna win them all back. I'm not worried, Jim. And you know what, Jim? This next week is 
Next two weeks are the biggest two weeks of my college football life. I've got Bedlam tomorrow. That's going to be the play. As it's actually Saturday. I'm going to make it the play tomorrow. And then I've got UNT UTSA, which I will be there. I will be in Denton. If you're in Dallas, if you're in Denton, go to the UNT UTSA game and say hello to me. We'll also be out drinking and such after because I'll be watching the, the Bedlam football game in the bar somewhere in Denton, Dallas. If you're in the DFW, come say hello to me. Will I be annoyed? Will I be happy? Let's find out then. And, and Jim, Conference USA Championship, which I've already bought my ticket for Friday, and it's going to be Liddy Bop. <laughs> Liddy Bop. All right, let's, let's review all of action, and then I will regale you with a little uh, Thanksgiving message a game i will play with you guys all right here we go the in nfl let me get everything up here with the lions games already on so we don't need to review that in raiders cowboys sorry let me move over here raiders cowboys have put on both in the raiders cowboys game we have the curb stomp play today number two cowboys minus seven i'm on the under 50 and a half and i love it and i'm I expect to move on the Raiders. But Bono's on a money line parlay Cowboys Bills at minus 115. Sharpie's on Pollard over 58 and a half receiving and rush yards. And Elliott over 14 and a half attempts. And Millsy's on Elliott over 63 and a half rush yards. Hunter Renfro over five and a half receptions at minus 145. Then we have the Bills Saints game Beasley over four and a half receptions at plus 102 is from Mills Diggs anytime TD at plus 127 for Millsy the under oh no yeah razor sharp picks is on the under 45 he's also on Beasley or Mills is, or I did the Mills stuff Josh Allen rush yards over 32 and a half for Sharpie and Josh Allen pass and rush yards over 310 and a half rush yards <laughs> Chris Nolan. Okay. And then in NCAA basketball, Max's action is already on. He's also on New Orleans minus one and a half. And the first half over 72 and a half in Alabama, Iona. Over 72 and a half, Alabama, Iona. I'm going to move on San Jose State plus seven. I'm going to move on Mississippi State minus two and a half. And I'm going to move on the under in Ole Miss, Mississippi State. God, that's going to be a fun game. And let's close here. Let me, let's close, absolutely, actually close on this. So first off, um, thank you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving. Thank you for supporting the show. I'm just so thankful to be able to cap with you guys each and every day. Shout out to Mike, Johnny K, Harold Williams, TD Lions. Oh, shit. Crystal Warren, Cab, Fender Jazz, Mark Nick, Perfect Rotation, Nate Dog, Hold My Beer. Gerald Jones, Jared TG, Viper NB. What a great group. Michael Robertson, Lesko Brandon, Sanka, Dan T, Pierre Suartas, Isaiah Bolton. All right. Let's do this here. Mike says over looking good in game one. See what the live, oh, live close is 44 and a half. No concerns here. All right, let's play a little game, as is a Thanksgiving tradition here in Parkdale. We're going to play a little game with you guys to put a bow on this show. I will give a Leche right after, and then we will close it up. You name it. Play a little game called Turkey or Terrorist. I didn't know you had that right. I forgot I, I, forgot I had it. I just remembered it. <laughs> okay, Turkey or Terrorist. A Thanksgiving tradition. All right. So you guys, tell me what you see. Tell me what you see. We'll start with this, okay? Let's see. Let's see the answers roll in here. What do you see there? What did you just see? Yes. Turkey. You are right. That was a turkey. That was a domesticated gobbler. It was a turkey. Yes, Dan T, you're right. Okay, let's try another one. Not, you're right, Mark, Nick, Mike, yes. Okay, let's try again. Okay. All right. There's no NHL today, John. Fathers provide no parental care. 
they walk around in groups and travel by foot. Yes. Turkey. You're right. That was a turkey. That was a turkey right there. Okay. You guys are doing a nice job. Jose, you're two for two. Uh, we'll try one more. We'll try one more. Okay, let's try this. Okay. Um, nestled in some gravy besides some mashed potatoes. Bang! Yes. Turkey. You're right. That was a turkey. It's always going to be turkey. Always going to be turkey. A jock turkey. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Swift is at minus four yards, says Joseph Gomez. How could he be at minus four yards if they just got a touchdown? Okay. I love you guys. Let's have a giant, giant Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you. You may want to spend time with your family and take pictures. I don't believe in that shit. Get in front of the TV, pour yourself a beverage, and watch some football, baby. And make some money, baby. Let's go. I love you guys. Happy Thanksgiving. Let's say, hey, those bookmakers! Get that shit. Oh, yeah, I can't he... get my mouth around that thing. Oh. <laughs>